Have you heard about the CrowdStrike outage and are wondering whether it could affect your computer? It actually could even if you have just a personal computer. Coming up next, I'll talk about the CrowdStrike outage and how it can affect your computer. So who yes, do we have Earl. on the line? Earl's on the line with you. Earl, welcome to a Faster PC Live technical support. How can we help you today? Okay, first of all, I love your show. Thank you. And fortunately, I was out uh, at Home Depot and I got back late for the beginning of the, uh, the show. Yes. Um, my question was, what happened yesterday with um, Microsoft, would that have any effect on my personal computer? I haven't been able to check any of my uh, emails or uh, my bank, bank accounts. It's just saying that it's not available. Yeah, so, so um, the, the, the problem would not directly impact your Microsoft uh, computer, but indirectly it may because, uh, and really it wouldn't uh, directly affect your computer unless your computer was running CrowdStrike, which is a cybersecurity software. And really it's not even marketed to residential. It's marketed to big businesses. Uh, they don't have a huge amount of business, uh, but they do about, I believe, $900 million a year. Um, it, you know, with, without a huge number of customers, they're dealing with very large customers. Um, but your email provider and your bank may be one of those customers. So, so in, in that case, yes, it could impact you because they may be down because they may be using CrowdStrike. So, and, you know, we were going to talk about CrowdStrike and the outage yesterday. I mean, this affected airlines. It affected affected medical. It affected banks. Um, maybe it affected email providers as well. Any customer using CrowdStrike uh, could have been affected by this. And what happened was there was an update that actually was taken by uh, or made by CrowdStrike, the CrowdStrike software. And the CrowdStrike software, again, is a cybersecurity software that is there to protect against cyber events. And, and being a cybersecurity software, it really has has permissions to do a lot of things on the computer, including changing certain files. And what actually happened with this is that it actually uh, changed a file that caused computers, when they rebooted, to go to a blue screen, what, what's called a blue screen of death. And I'm sure uh, many of those out there, maybe even you, uh, are, are familiar with this blue screen of death, you know, in the in the Windows um, Windows 8 and Windows 7 days, it was a you know it was a really a, you know kind of a almost I guess a more of a royal blue. Um, in the newer Windows 10 and 11, it's it's a softer blue, so it doesn't look quite as ominous. But it's still what it means is your computer tried to boot into Windows and was not able to get all the way into Windows. So you can imagine. Hospitals. Hospitals had major problems with with this uh, because of this CrowdStrike issue. There are hospitals today that, and and really, it's it's much more efficient to not have paper. I mean, you know, hospitals aren't walking around with paper that tells them what type of medication their patients their patients take. They're not walking around you know, uh, with information and paper that tells them what the, what the patient is actually there for and what the patient is and in the various uh, treatment that the patient's going to have and what to watch out for. And certainly the staff may remember if they were there, you know, maybe the day before and, and had this patient, they may remember, but, and they may be able to get some briefing from their, their other, you know, other staff, but, but really, um, it does can, can create problems when the computers aren't available. Major, major problems. In fact, one of the things that we hear quite often is, you know, times were just so much simpler in, in the old days before, before computers. And, you know, that, that to an extent is, is true. I mean, I remember going to the dentist. We had a dentist that fought 
automation and fought computers for a long, 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 long time. In fact, um, you know, as, as recent as maybe 10 years ago, when you went to the dentist and, and you needed to schedule an appointment, they would pull out an index card out of a little metal box that would have your name on it. And, and they had like a manual system of scheduling the next appointment. And, and now they're, they're totally automated in that. So, so, um, you know, computers definitely make businesses more efficient and, 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 you know, definitely help out with keeping track of things and can help help even preventing errors. But when there's a problem um, with the computer, and in this case, it affected, you know, the entire companies. Now, one of the things I, I saw and I actually heard on the CBS uh, news feed coming into this show before this show, you may have heard it. Uh, those I know, Earl, you weren't you weren't listening at the beginning, but uh, some of those that were listening may have heard it. Um, the the advice to actually uh, diversify your cybersecurity offerings, and certainly to an extent that is is good is good um, good information that you should actually and we actually believe the best the best protection is to have multiple layers of protection to not put all of your eggs in one basket and we really do that because if one if one of those uh, entities or one of those layers, the company that provides that service, if their service is compromised, we at least still have other layers that can actually watch and look and shut down a threat, even if it's coming from another cybersecurity firm, uh, it can be shut down. But that that type of multi-layer or or having multiple providers would not be effective unless you just had some computers protected by one provider and some computers protected by another provider. And when you do stuff like that, what happens is that the uh, no, you know none of the computers are as protected as they would be if the same providers were providing all of the service for all of the computers. For instance, we have what's called a one of one in our cybersecurity stack for companies, we have managed detect and respond, which includes a SOC, which stands for Security Operations Center. So there's software that's watching for odd things happening. And when there's an odd thing that happens or it detects something odd, like maybe someone trying to log in from Russia or someone trying to log in from China, um, someone trying to log in from the Ukraine. When it sees something odd like that, it sends an alert to to or maybe someone actually did log in from one of those companies or one of those countries. It actually sends an alert to a human being that's working 24 seven, you know, obviously not the same person, but they have shifts of, of technicians that are working 24 seven, uh, 365 days a year to actually watch over the network. And so it can actually, uh, those, those engineers can actually come in and look at that. Well, if we used one MDR provider with SOC for some computers and another one for other computers, then neither of them would have all of the information and would not be able to fully protect the network. And and one of them, you know, could slip up and and allow a hacker into a system and the other one would have no knowledge of that. So so I don't believe that that really is is the solution here. But there is a solution. And sometimes a lot of times solutions to technology problems are simple. But they're only simple once you figure out what is causing the problem. And it takes some time sometimes to figure out what is causing the problem. And certainly CrowdStrike worked with various vendors and they found out what caused the problem. And just right now, I'm going to actually go over the steps that you need to take for if you're out there. Maybe, you know, and, and really for in, in most cases, this would not be. In, in, in most cases, this would not be someone that is a private person um, or, you know, th that would be doing this. In most cases, this would be an IT professional 
that would be doing this. But in this case, if you're out there, you're listening, and I know we do have some IT professionals that do listen to this show, and sometimes they call in per- periodically, uh, but but we actually are, are going about to share with you the solution to a computer that has this issue, and that is to boot, to go into recovery mode and to boot into safe mode. In safe mode, you're not loading all of the operating system. You're not loading all of the all of the software that normally would load, and you can actually make some some changes to the system. And what you want to do is you actually want to delete a file that is in the Windows folder, in the System32 folder inside of Windows, and in the Drivers folder inside of that folder, and in the CrowdStrike folder inside of driver, the Drivers folder. And the file name is c 0 291 asterisk.sys. So, so that would actually um, delete several files. So, um, you know, the asterisk is a wild card. So anything that starts with C-00000291 um, and, and then ends with dot .cy or sys would actually be a file that would need to be deleted. You can actually um, run that from the command prompt and and we can actually include the notes for that uh, after this show's over in the full system notes or the full show notes. We'll also, when we roll out this video, we will include that in that that in the notes as well or the description below that video as well, so that anyone that is a a security expert or a a computer technician that is dealing with this CrowdStrike issue, you will have the information to be able to resolve that problem and you will be able to do so again, um, you know, by by following the steps that that we provide in that. So so, um, you know, but but definitely this could if your bank was down, if your, you know, if you were flying and your airline was down, it would affect you. If you, if your email provider were using CrowdStrike, it would definitely, it could definitely affect you. So this is something that, that is, is, is out there. A lot of the systems, you know, should be coming back online as because this, this workaround or this resolution is, is widely known now and, and widely distributed. So, so that's something that, that definitely, you know, we would just encourage you to uh, to take a look at if you are an IT professional out there and you need to know how to how to resolve this. And I would imagine, uh, Earl, that your your bank website will be coming up soon. That that your email service provider will be coming up soon. Sometimes when you're having problems with your computer, it's your computer. But sometimes when you're accessing a third party. It could be that third party is just having problems. We see this on a regular basis here here um, in our shop as we're working on situations. Sometimes we're working on resetting a password. And let's say, um, you know, the company is supposed to send us a code. We don't get the code. Well, their system that sends the code sometimes is down. Sometimes it's the person's phone's not working or or maybe, uh, you know, that number's being blocked somehow from from coming through. But some, sometimes that service, that service provider is actually being blocked and we actually are, um, you know, just have to wait. We have to try it the next day or the next day. Sometimes, you know, the, the companies even think, hey, someone's trying to hack in, so we're not going to send the code right now and you have to wait even longer. But but we can, you know, you have to sometimes be patient with these things. But I would imagine that those services that you weren't able to access yesterday may be coming up soon. And it would be interesting if anyone else has uh, experienced any any problems with this. You can definitely give a call into the show and we can go over that as well. Uh, coming out of the next break. I hope you've liked this video, that you've learned something from it. If you have, please click the like button. Click subscribe and click the bell to be notified when we release new videos. And remember, when you have computer problems, you need a faster PC.